What's up, guys, and welcome to episode 17 of our Gran Turismo 2 Plus Let's Play. Today, we're going to be doing another fun build video, and I'm pretty much filming these the same days as episode like 12 through 16. Um, I just had a bit of an afternoon and wanted to do something, pick my spirits up, and so booted up this once more. And we're going to play a little bit more of GT2 Plus because I've really enjoyed doing this. So last video we took on the GT300 Championship in the final outing of our British Touring Car Championship Racing Modified Audi S4. It, the car itself is just was in need of retirement. I mean, the car is just not competitive enough anymore. We've just gotten to that point in the game now where the S4 has just kind of hit its limit. And that's unfortunate because my intention originally when I first got the S4 was to beat the game with it. And it's just unfortunately not capable of doing so. Uh, the Gran Turismo All-Stars showed me that enough. And watching it only beat the uh, GT300 cars with just a tiny bit. Um, proved enough that this car was probably at its limit and was not going to be capable of actually um, beating the game on its own. Um, so we're going to be doing a couple of things in this video. Mostly this video is going to be focusing around giving another car, giving a car that I previously owned a second chance. So a while back, I believe it was episode 9 or 10, we took on the Test Course Tune Turbo Cup Race. Now I did that originally in the S4. But wound up actually getting a hold of a Roof CTR2, which is of course based on the Porsche 911, one of my favorite cars to ever exist, and it's really the only exotic that really catches my attention anymore. And it was rather underwhelming, but we built it. And I expected this to be a 700 plus horsepower car that could easily clock to 50 miles an hour if I wanted it to. Um, and it wasn't. It made about 629, I think, uh, was the final number on that front. And it was, there was no racing modifications for it. It was severely underpowered um, compared to what I expected it to be. And uh, just was kind of a disappointment. I wound up selling the car in a later episode. I can't remember exactly what episode for substantial loss. I mean, it was a well over, you know, 150, 200K build on top of the car itself. Uh, and I think I sold it for maybe like 50K, if that. So we're not giving it another chance but what we're going to do different is get a ctr2 sport this time instead of getting the ct the standard ctr2 um and uh, we're going to give it a try and we're going to put it toe to toe with the new beetle gt the audi s4 and the zexel gtr because i am curious just which one will be the best out of the three is this really going to dictate which car I beat the game with? Not really. Um, I mean, if the roof can, for some reason, completely outclass everything in its, in its wake, then maybe I'd consider beating the game with it. So the reason I'm choosing the CTR2 Sport is it's just the most um, track ready, in my opinion. It's 540 horsepower, 3,000 pounds. The other one that costs the same, the Turbo R, makes 490 and weighs 3,200 pounds. So, I mean, the, the CTR2 Sport is just the better option. And sure, it doesn't look as good as the BTR2 does in my eyes, but I still like how it looks. I think we're going to go with this blue, more of like a Miami blue kind of color, which I do like. It's a 440,000 credit car. It's a very expensive build. <laughs> well, we're going to give it a try. I think the BTR2 looks better, though. I mean, come on. That front end, this, this weird, like, split nose thing it's got going on, I really like. But I'm not... This, that's not going to be able to do what I want it to do. So let's build the CTR2 Sport and see what we can do. So our turbo options are fairly limited. Once a, much like the original CTR2 that we did before, it's kind of depressing considering that we're barely we're getting 30 horsepower out of the thing. Um, but I mean we're already hitting 600, which is something that the other CTR2 took a good bit of building to hit. Um, I mean, we're making 629 before we've even done all the port and polish and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we've already tied my original CTR2 build. Um, so up to 640. This one may get close to 700. I don't expect it to hit 700, but it could get close. 655. Highly doubt they could displace one up, I figured. Port and polish always nets a good bit of power. Oh, holy unlucky number. How about that? Yikes. That's not a number you like you guys like to see. But it, may, it does make more power than my old CTR2 did. 
the original CTR2 project. So pretty much we're just going to build the snot out of this thing as if it was going to be racing modified. And we're going to see what kind of lap times it puts down. Unfortunately there's not a test in tune in this game like in GT3. Um, so outside of like doing quarter mile and stuff like that. This car would absolutely walk the S4 probably in a straight line and probably on track as well. But um, currently, I, I honestly, I don't know how it'll do in corners against some of the actual established race cars. That's my thing, if the CTR2 Sport will be able to compete with those. Because um, it's kind of an aggressive endeavor to take on. It's definitely got the power for it. I mean, I think it could easily be a competitor to like the Zexel in the world of uh, cornering, if it wanted to be. So we're going to do our weight reduction as well now, which is going to get the car very, very low on the weight scales. I mean, this car already weighs literally nothing. So getting it down into the low twos will be quite the endeavor. I don't think there's racing modifications. I figured there wasn't. So there we go. CTR2 is ready to rumble. Our new CTR2. So let's see what our final weight is. So we make just under 670 horsepower, 2,600 pounds of weight underneath it. Um, so I mean, it's a very, very fast car. Um, 600 pound feet of torque as well. Goodness. So in comparison to the new Beetle GT, New Beetle GT is down about 200 horsepower, but it weighs about, I think, 700 pounds less. I think, what was it, 2,800 that the CTR2 weighed? 26, so it's only about 500 pounds less than the CTR2. The Zexel Skyline weighs 2,600 pounds, it makes 680 horsepower, so that'll be a fairly close battle between the Zexel Skyline and the CTR2 Sport. So you're probably wondering at this point, how are we going to be able to test the test and tune these cars properly and get an idea for which one would be better around a track? We're going to find that out in a second because I'm going to put some wheels on this car because quite frankly, we need some wheels. And I think you guys know by now what I was going to do. I'm going to put some DVSs on the 911 on the roof. I think we're going to go with the... Uh, I do like regular LMs, but I've overused those wheels on this playthrough. I'm gonna go with you guys. Unfortunately, Koenig's not in here, and I actually run Koenig's on my real car. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose a race that doesn't have a horsepower limit, and our goal is just to see what lap time we'll run. But we'll we probably wind up using the Sunday Cup race for this. Um, we'll do. Let's do Tahiti Road. That should be a fairly simple track to gauge handling on. I'm going to take note of what the lap times are in these cars. So we're going to come over here and we're going to go ahead and adjust everything how we like it. So we need to bump this down to 95. Um, let's bump these up one. This is how I like to do things. So we're going to bump the auto setup up a touch. Not a whole lot. No downforce settings, of course, because the car doesn't have racing modifications on it. All right, let's see what the CTR2 Sport can do on track. Now, I didn't pick, I tried to pick the most complex of the bunch instead of just picking one that was super fast paced because obviously it's going to benefit cars like the CTR2 and the Zexel. course we're just gonna immediately sprint away from everyone else that's part of why i chose this event was to pick an event that i could effectively time trial because i'd be so much faster and i could get at least two chances i really like the car like i really wish it was proper racing modifications for it i'd be all over it I really like this blue as well. I think mean, that was a definite win. Let's 
So obviously there's going to be some handling advantages. This car does have a tad bit of understeer to it. Not quite as bad as the S4, but it's pretty bad. Ah, yeah, this thing's got definitely got some understeer. Let's see if the uh, GTR can do it. I, mean, I feel pretty solid about this. I mean, a 106 is no is nothing to scoff at on Tahiti Road. CTR's best time is a 102. So a 102 in the CTR2 sport. So not a bad run at all. I mean, obviously there was some cleanup we could have done to not quite hit the wall during some of that. And now we're going to go snag the RS or the S4. Keep wanting to say the RS4 and do a run of that same race with it, I don't think it's going to be able to set a faster last time than the CTR2. I think the roof just probably put on quite the show. Uh, I barely expect the Zexel to keep up. If the Zexel makes more power and weighs as much, it probably has the downforce tuning that the um, roof doesn't have. Uh, much like the S4, for that matter. Uh, the S4 does have an advantage of having aero tuning and stuff like that. which uh, the roof doesn't have. All right, here we go. So 102 is the time to beat for the S4. I don't have faith it's going to beat it. But y'all didn't think I was going to be showing it off directly after retiring it. It's going to get out of the hole faster. It hooks up really well. But this thing just doesn't have the grip. The sheer handling of the CTR2. Definitely not bad though on this track. It's doing quite well. Like I said before, the S4, when it does handle really well, it's a great car. It's just. I've had more issues with the understeer than not. I have to I have to enter corners quite slow. Mainly because I have so much weight to toss around. I mean, 2,800 pounds is definitely heavier than most racing cars. And sure, it's light. I mean, th this car technically weighs less than my actual real life GTI does, but at the same time. You know, it's heavier. It's heavy for a race car. So our opening lap is a 109, which is a pretty respectable time. We'll see how it does on our second full lap. Must be the one time the S4 could beat something with more power. Oh goodness! Come on. Let's understeer more grip. I don't know, this might be close. And then I'm looking at it, they're running pretty close to each other in terms of times. I may have spoken too soon. The S4 might be able to pull this off. Nope, one minute three. That sport is just barely slower than the CTR2, but enough to make a difference. 
Every second counts in racing. It's not bad, though. I mean, that's pretty respectable. Especially considering the fact that, you know, that's, I mean, it was going against a supercar. <laughs> that's a modified supercar. So, I mean, the fact that it did as well as it did was kind of impressive. S4 still got it. So now we're going to rock the Zexel and kind of my first ever outing with it. Uh, I have not driven this car yet. And I'm curious how this is going to go. This is probably the best case scenario car for this. This is probably the car that's going to dominate this. Um, while the CTR is fast, I think that this weighing about the same and having more aero is going to help it. I mean, I'd be able to stretch out in the straights as much as the... Um, I'm going to make sure it's actually got the tires I want. Super soft. Going to even the playing field a little bit. I'm going to trust the factory tuning on this one. Alright, let's see what this thing can do. So all the arrow, while it will help in the corners, is going to work to its detriment in terms of top speed. So this might be where the CTR takes an advantage, is that this car doesn't have the top speed advantage like the um, like the CTR2 does. This thing's definitely got some steam, that is for sure. It's got a lot of understeer itself though. Ooh, tail went out. So again, the 102095, I believe, is the time to beat here. And it's definitely got a good enough steam for it. A 108 on its opening lap. So a second ahead already of the S4 on the opening lap. Which despite its much worse launch. We're still going to run this car for the GT500 championship, regardless of how it finishes in this three-way showdown. Probably be four-way once the Beetle comes out. This could be close. Very close. Wow. Tied with the CTR effectively. Well, not even a full tenth of a second faster. 0 0.07, I believe, faster than the CTR. All right. So the CTR2 is actually kind of impressive that it kept up with a full-blown race car like that. Like, being a street car. Like, that was fairly impressive. The, CRT, the CTR2 was able to do that. Alright, let's skedaddle back to the house here and pick up the Beetle. And it's first outing. I have yet to drive this car too. And while we've got a, a giant weight advantage, we also have a very large weight or horsepower disadvantage. So if this car can put down some serious speed and take out those two cars, I'd be genuinely kind of impressed. It's all-wheel drive. It's got the 3.2 VR6, one of my favorite engines ever, but it's NA, 450 horsepower. I mean, we are definitely on playing hard mode right now. All right, super soft compound tire. Once again, I'll probably trust the factory tuning on this thing. But later on, we may adjust it and give this thing a bit more... 
I'm curious how this is going to go because I feel like this car is got some good, some bad. It's probably going to handle better than the Zexel Skyline, but I don't expect it to like necessarily beat it. Let's see how she does. It gets out of the hole really fast. I will say that right away. And the handling is fairly good, just from the little bit I'm experiencing so far. Darn. I think I bumped that same wall in the Zexel. is turbocharged. Why couldn't I upgrade the turbo then? That's lame. So far the slowest opening lap of the bunch. Receiver can rebound it off of a very slow start. I don't think this is going to be a winner right here. Oh, wait. A 103 0. So just over a second slower than the Zexel, which is kind of impressive considering that the Zexel makes a ton more power. And had I gotten more clean laps with the Beetle, might have been able to beat it. Not too shabby. I'm kind of impressed with the bug. The fact that it's severely underpowered about the S... All three of like the other cars we ran. The S4 uh, makes 597. The Zexel makes 680. The CTR2 makes 660. It's almost 670. So not too shabby for the... Uh, for the CTR2, the Beetle, or it, really any of the cars. I mean, the S4 did its best. <laughs> um, but for the GT500 Championship, we're definitely going to throw out the Zexel. And I think for the Super Touring Trophy, we're probably going to rock the Beetle. Because obviously the Beetle's a really solid car. Um, but yeah, I hope you all enjoyed just this fun little just shootout between four cars. I know it took a lot of time, but next episode we're going to take on the GT500 Championship in the Zexel. And then we'll go back and do the Super Touring Car Championship in the Beetle. Hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day, guys.